morning. morning. Merry Christmas. Christmas. We're glad you're here this morning as we celebrate the birth of Christ this day. Um, You all are welcome here to peace. Um, You all are welcome to have Holy Communion today. Um, We'll be communing by intinction, um, which means to dip. So that's our method of how we'll do that. I'll give you an explanation of how that'll work. Um, I'll be over here on this side. You can form two lines down this aisle. Um, You can put out your hand for a wafer. If you need a gluten-free wafer, let me know that. I'll have that for you. Um, If you're from this section, you'll turn to the right. There'll be a communion server right around here with a divided cup. Uh, It has two parts in it. The wine is dark. The grape juice is light. Dip in whichever one you'd like in your mouth. Then back to your seats. Same thing right around here for you guys. You guys will turn to the left. Wine or grape juice in your mouth. Back to your seats. Pastor Don will be doing the same thing over here down this um, aisle here. Two lines down this aisle. Wafer, gluten-free wafer. You guys will turn to the left that way for the wine or grape juice. You guys will turn to the right that way. All right? How's that sound, everybody? Good. If you're not sure what you're doing, hopefully the person ahead of you knows. Um, If not, just come forward and we'll figure it out either way. Jesus said to do this in honor and memory of him, and you all are welcome to come and receive this, whatever your beliefs, whatever you feel like. If you feel God calling you to receive the bread and the wine, his body and blood in this meal, please come forward today. All right. A few other announcements from your um, uh, from your bulletin here we'd like to highlight. Don't forget, next week the schedule's a little bit differently. We will have the 7 o'clock service um, on Thursday night, uh, but Sunday morning we figure the bumper crowd on New Year's Eve day, we know it's going to be huge, so we wanted to pack you all into one service. So it'll be 9.30 on uh, New Year's Eve day next Sunday. Mark your calendars for that. All right. Um, Don't forget to check in today. Um, Always check in at Facebook um, through your Facebook apps on your smartphones. Don't forget to do that. It's a great way. And we have a little program we call Causely, where when you check in with a photo, a video, something you hear from the service today, um, that will go to help people in another place. And this month's is giving books to kids who um, need that so they can learn and grow. So what a great cause. You can do that today. All right. Um, Check out the rest of the things in your bulletin. Um, as we worship this morning, but we want you to be nice to those around you. Can you stand up and say Merry Christmas to those around you? Our opening song is in the green hymnals. If you like the music, it'll also be on the screens for all the words, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
We continue our worship on this Christmas morning with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. We gather ourselves together this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amid the darkness of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome the light of God's forgiveness. We take a moment in silence as we prepare our hearts for our confession. And we continue. God of grace and truth, in Christ Jesus, you come among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light and have not trusted the good news of great joy. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the fullness of your love, trusting in the grace of Christ our Lord. Amen. The angel said, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. With great joy I announce to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Sit down. You can sit down for this one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, we are gathered here this morning to be reminded again of how much you love us. You loved us so much that you sent your Son into this world to show us grace, love, truth, and your presence that is always with us. We thank you for Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus, who came so long ago, who comes to us even now, and who promises to come again. We pray this in Jesus' holy name, and all God's people said, Amen. 
We'll continue with the Bible reading. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Here ends the reading. And boys and girls, would you please come on up? Come on up. We've got three boys, two girls. Oh, here comes Josh, too. Morning, guys. Oh, we've got lots of friends here today. Here we go. You don't have to be afraid, Blair, but some other time, okay? Hi, guys. Merry Christmas. You having a good Christmas so far? You guys see that big present up on the altar? Yeah. I brought that here yesterday. I showed the kids that present, and I, wanted, I asked them, do you want to know what's in the present? Guess what they said? Yeah. Yes, we're going to know what's in the present. You know what I said? Too bad. <laughs> you have to wait. You have to wait. Do you guys like to wait? No. No, it's kind of hard to wait, isn't it? You ever have to wait to open a present? Yeah, that's kind of hard. But you know what makes waiting easier? When you know it's going to be good. When you know something's going to be good, then it's easier to wait. Okay? Now let's pretend this. Let's pretend it's Christmas morning. Okay? You guys pretend it's Christmas morning. And you come downstairs and you have a brand new bicycle. Would you say, a bicycle? I can't ride a bicycle in the snow. Why would I want a bicycle now? Would you say that? No, you say, oh, I got a bicycle in the summer. It's going to be great because I'm going to be able to ride my bicycle. What if you woke up on Christmas morning and somebody came to your house and said, we're going to put a pool in your backyard. Would you say, a pool? It's winter time. What are we going to do with a pool in the backyard? Or would you say, oh, that's going to be so good when it's warm outside to have a pool in the backyard. You could wait, right? Because it was going to be good. Or let's say you open a package and inside there are car keys. All right? And they said... You have a car. Would you say, I don't want a car. I'll have to wait till I'm 16. Or would you say, that's so cool. When I get to be 16, I'll have my own car. The waiting wouldn't be too hard because you had something good, right? Well, you know what happened today? There were some shepherds in the lesson. And they're out in the field at night. And the angel comes to them. And they get scared. But the angel said, no, 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 don't be afraid. I've got good news. Here's the good news. A Savior has been born for you. Is a Savior a good thing? Savior gives us everything we need. A Savior helps us know we're okay. A Savior makes sure we're going to live forever. So, having a Savior is a good thing, right? But then the angel said, the Savior is born, and you're going to find him. He's a baby. Did the shepherd say, a baby? How can a baby be a savior? We're going to have to wait a long time for him to be a savior. Did they say, we don't want a savior if it's a baby? Did they say that? No, they didn't. They didn't say that. You know what they did? 
They went to see the baby, and they knew someday that baby was going to grow up and make sure everybody knew that God loved them and make sure that everybody have life. Okay? Did that happen? Who was the Savior? It was Jesus, wasn't it? He was a baby, but he grew up. He grew up to be a man to let everybody know that God loves them. And then he died on the cross and came back to let us know we're always going to be in God's loving care. That's a good story. The shepherds had to wait, too. But you know what else Jesus says? Yeah. I'm going to come back someday. And nobody's going to be sick anymore. And nobody's going to fight anymore. And nobody's going to cry anymore. And nobody's going to die anymore. Right? We have to wait for that, don't we? But is that a good thing? To know that Jesus is coming back? Do we know when? No, nope, but we wait. Because no, we know God loves us now. And someday everything will be the way God wants it to be. All right? So, we're done with Advent. In Advent, we remember, Jesus came. He's coming back. He's with us today. All right? And you know what that means? We get to light five candles today. You guys come up with me? Was there light some candles here? Watch out for the poinsettias now, okay? All right, they might jump out at you. Come back here, guys. Through the magic trail. You guys ready for five candles today? Yeah. All right. Here comes number one. This is the hope candle. This is number one. Here's the peace candle. That's number two. Here's the joy candle. That's number three. (laughs) Then there's the love candle. That's number four. And now we have the Christmas candle, number five. All right. And do you think it's a birthday candle? Do you know what? Let's see what's in the box, okay? You want to see what's in the box? There's a present in the box. You're close. A birthday cake. Whose birthday is it? Not your birthday. (laughs) Whose birthday is it? It's Jesus' birthday, isn't it? I'm going to light the candle, and guess what we're going to sing? And the old people are going to sing too, okay? Can you guys sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Well, I hope you guys have lots of nice presents today. The best present is Jesus. And now you don't have to wait at all. It's time to go back to your seats, boys and girls. And they're probably saying, well, why didn't he let us blow out the candle? Because if they blow out the candle, my wife won't let me eat the cake. (laughs) I'm serious. (laughs) Did the kids blow on the candle? No. Well, then you can eat it. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. They were terrified, those shepherds. They were terrified, but they settled down. Because they started to realize, we've got some pretty good gifts here. We've got some pretty good gifts. First of all, they got to see angels. Anybody seen angels? Pretty special thing if you see angels, okay? That was a pretty good thing. Second thing was, the angels said they had a Savior. A Savior was born to them. That was good news too. And they got to see the Savior. They went into Bethlehem, found the baby in the manger. They got to see the Savior. But maybe the greatest gift they had was the ability to tell other people what happened. to The ability to share the gift of the Savior. I have a story for you today. It's called Exchanging Gifts. It's a little long, but I think you'll like it. I grew up believing that Christmas was a time when wise and royal visitors came riding, when at midnight the barnyard animals talked to each other, and in the light of an amazing new star, our Savior came to earth as the Christ child. Christmas, to me, has always been a time of serene enchantment. And never more so than the year that my son Marty was eight years old. That was the same year that my three children and I had moved into a small but warm 
mobile home in a forested area just outside Redmond, Washington. As the Christmas season approached, our spirits were cheerful, not to be dampened by the winter rains that swept down, dousing us daily and keeping the floors constantly muddy. Throughout that December, Marty was most spirited and the busiest of, a, busiest of us all. Marty was my youngest, a cheerful eight-year-old boy, blonde-haired and playful, with a quaint habit of looking at you and cocking his head like a puppy when you talk to him. The reason for this was that Marty was deaf in his left ear, but it was a condition that he never complained about. For weeks, I'd been watching Marty. I knew that something was going on with him that he was not telling anyone about. How eagerly he made his bed, took out the trash, set the table, and helped his older brother and sister prepare dinner before I got home from work. I saw how, saw how he silently collected his tiny allowance and tucked it away, never spending a penny of it. I wasn't sure what all this was, activity was about, but I suspected that somehow it had something to do with Kenny. Kenny was Marty's best friend, and ever since they found each other in the springtime, they were seldom apart. When I called to one, they both appeared. Their world was in the meadow, a horse pasture broken by a small winding stream where they caught frogs and snakes and searched for arrowheads and golden treasure. Times were hard for my children and me, but Kenny's family was desperately poor. His mother was having a terrible struggle feeding and clothing her two young children. They also were a fatherless family, but Kenny's mother was a very proud woman. She had strict rules about taking from others. How we worked, as we did each year, to make our home festive for Christmas. Our gifts were all finished and safely hidden away, and decorations hung from every corner and surface imaginable. Marty and Kenny would sometimes sit still at the table long enough to help make paper chains or cut beautiful stars for the tree. But then in a flash, one would whisper to the other, and they would be out the door and into the horse pasture or sliding cautiously under the electric fence that separated our yard from Kenny's. Shortly before Christmas, Marty came into the kitchen and told me in a voice filled with great pleasure and pride, Mom, I bought Kenny a Christmas present. Want to see it? So that's what he's been up to, I said to myself. It's something he's wanted for a long, long time, Marty said. And wiping his hands on a dish towel, he pulled a small box from his pocket. Lifting the lid, I saw a pocket compass that my son had been saving all those allowances to buy, a little compass to point an eight-year-old adventurer through the woods. It's a lovely gift, Martin, I said. But even as I spoke, a disturbing thought came to mind. Kenny's family could barely afford to exchange gifts between themselves, and giving presents to others was out of the question. I felt sure that Kenny's proud mother would not permit her son to receive something he could not return in kind. Gently, carefully, I talked over the problem with Marty. He understood what I was saying. I know, Mom, I know. But what if it's a secret? What if they never find out who gave it? I didn't know how to answer him, so I left the matter in the hands of the Lord. The day before Christmas was rainy, cold, and gray. My children and I put finishing touches on Christmas secrets and prepared for family and friends who would be dropping by. Darkness settled in, and the rain continued. I looked out the kitchen window over the sink and felt an unusual sadness. How very mundane the rain seemed on a Christmas Eve. Would wise men and kings come riding on such a night? It seemed to me that curious and wonderful things happened on clear nights. Nights when no one could at least, when one could at least see a star in the heavens. I turned from the window, and as, as I checked on the bread in the oven, I saw Marty slip out the door, his wearing his coat over his pajamas. I knew he was clutching a little colorful wrapped box in his pocket. Later, Marty told me all that had happened to him that night. He had gone down to the so soggy, horse pasture, slid under the electric fence, 
and sloshed through puddles across the yard to Kenny's house. He had tiptoed up the steps with his muddy shoes squishing. He silently opened the screen door just to crack, placed the gift on the doorstep, took a deep breath, and pressed on the doorbell really hard. Quickly, Marty turned, ran down the steps and across the yard in a wild race to get away without being seen. Then, in the dark, he suddenly crashed into the electric fence. The powerful shock sent him reeling. He laid stunned on the wet ground, gasping for breath. Feeble, confused, and frightened, he found his way back through the darkness of that rainy Christmas Eve. Marty! I cried as he stumbled through the door. Marty, what happened? His lower lip quivered, and his eyes brimmed with tears. Mom, I forgot about the electric fence. I ran into it, and it knocked me down, he said. I hugged his muddy little body to me. He was dazed, and there was an ugly red mark from the fence beginning to blister his face from mouth to his ear. I treated the blister, and with a more warm cup of cocoa soothing him, Marty's bright spirits were restored. I tucked him into bed, and just before he fell asleep, he looked up at me and said with relief, Mom, I'm sure Kenny didn't see me. I went to bed feeling sad and discouraged. The encounter with the electric fence seemed such a cruel thing to happen to a little boy when on the purest, purest kind of Christmas mission doing what the Heavenly Father wants us all to do, give to others, and in secret at that. I did not sleep well that night. Deep inside I was feeling disappointed that it was Christmas Eve, and it was just another ordinary problem-filled night, not a night of joyous enchantment at all. But I was wrong. By morning the rain had stopped and the sun shone brightly for Christmas Day. The burned streak on Marty's face was red and swollen, but I was grateful to see that it was not a dangerous wound. We opened our presents to each other, and soon, not unexpectedly, Kenny was knocking on the door, eager, eager to show Marty his new compass and tell about the mystery of its arrival. It was plain that Kenny didn't suspect at Marty at all, and while the two of them talked, Marty smiled and smiled and smiled. Then I noticed that while the two boys were comparing their Christmases, nodding and gesturing and chattering away, Marty was not cocking his head as usual. When Kenny was talking, Marty was listening with his deaf ear, the ear that had slammed into the fence. Weeks later, a report came from the school nurse confirming what Marty and I already knew. Marty now has complete hearing in both ears. The miracle of how Marty regained his hearing and still has it remains just that, a miracle. Doctors feel that the shock from the electric fence was responsible. Probably so. Whatever the scientific reason, I just remain thankful to the Heavenly Father for that pure exchange of gifts on that rainy Christmas Eve. So you see, strange and wonderful things still happen on the night that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the Christ child. And one does not have to have a clear night to follow a star. I hope you all receive good gifts on this Christmas. But you know the greatest gift. It's the gift of forgiveness and hope and love. The gift we have through Jesus. And I hope maybe we all receive another gift. The gift of sharing the good news of Jesus. And maybe miracles will happen. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding keep our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus. Amen. The next hymn is Holy Child Within a Manger. You won't find it in any book. It's only on the screen.
Please stand. Holy child within the manger, long ago yet ever near, come as friend to every stranger, come as hope for every fear. As you live to heal the broken, greet the outcast, free the bound. As you taught us love unspoken, teach us now where you are found. Once again we tell the story, how your love for us was shown. When the image of your glory wore an image like our own. Come and lighten with your wisdom. Come and fill us with your grace. May the fire of your compassion kindle every land and race. Holy Child within the manger, lead us ever in your way. So we see in every stranger how you come to us today. In our lives and in our living, give us strength to live as you that our hearts might be forgiving and our spirits strong and true. As God's people, we are blessed to gather together again to be reminded of who God is for us, a God of grace, of presence, and of love. And we can respond in many ways. We'll respond together this morning with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers this morning, we have a few people who are in special need. We'd like to raise them up before you, and hopefully in some way you can be present with them um, in their needs. We pray for Kathy Cordy. She's receiving hospice care. We pray for Connie Flagel, Katie Monk, and Melissa Duren, all having medical treatment. And it's always odd to see my name when you're, I'm praying for myself and my family when I see it on here. Um, but we lost my grandmother last week, so um, we appreciate your prayers, and we'll pray for me and my family this morning. So um, we'll do that today as well. So I will end each petition by praying, Lord, in your mercy, um, and your responses hear our prayer. Created in the image and likeness of God, we pray for the light of life in all people, for new birth among us, and for communities that long for new life. We thank you, God, that you loved us all so much, and everyone in this world. You loved us all so much that you wanted to be among us. And so you gave us your Son, your presence of grace and love. We thank you for his life, his forgiveness, his peace, and the choice he made to give his life for each and every one of us. Help us to look to you and to receive this gift and to give back the same gift that we have been given to others in need. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we pray for our world. We pray for all those places that have injustices, wars, killings, all these hard things in our world, God. We pray you would be with our nation's leaders, lead them to the ways of justice and peace, and that you would be with us as your people, to use our hands, our feet, and our very presence to bring peace to this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for those who are in need. May you bring them your healing, your presence, and most of all, your grace that is for them and for all people. We pray this day for Kathy. 
for Connie, for Katie, for Melissa, and for my family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we take a moment in silence now to offer the prayers from our hearts to you who promise to hear us. God, you promise to hear our cries of need. And we will hold you to your promises to answer them, God. We pray that you would answer our prayers in your own way, your own time, in your own strength. But we pray, God, that you, as we wait for you to answer them, we pray for strength, for understanding, and your patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated and we'll receive your offering. And Destin's going to play. Please stand, and as we ushers bring up our offering, we'll sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Swiftly winging, angels singing, bells are ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Christ the child is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the child was born for you. Christ the child was born for you. And let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving 
what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We pray our Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This table has been prepared. All are welcome to come and receive this gift of God's grace.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive this benediction. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. Behind you to encourage you. Above you to watch over you. Beside you to befriend you. And within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said. Amen. Our sending song is Go Tell It on a Mountain.